In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the, a derivation or a proof of the sine law or the law of sines. Those two uh, phrases are interchangeable. They mean the same thing. And so we have this uh, triangle ABC. And of course, the uh, sides across from the angles are labeled with their lowercase counterpart. Angle A here, side A here, uh, angle B here, side B here, angle C, and side C across from it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to draw, we're going to make a little construction of the triangle here. We're going to draw a perpendicular from A down to BC. So here's my perpendicular. I'm going to call that H. Uh, so it's perpendicular to, uh, to BC. So it's going to really cut this into two triangles. Uh, this one here, I'm going to call that D. So the ABD triangle and the ACD triangle. So let's take a look at the left one first. In triangle ABD, uh, side H is uh, opposite angle B, so this would be our opposite side for this angle, and the C would be the hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. So opposite and hypotenuse is the sine ratio. So this is a right angle triangle, so we're going to use the sine ratio, and the sine of angle B would equal H over C. Again, uh, H is the opposite side, C is the hypotenuse, so opposite over hypotenuse. And cross multiplying to uh, isolate for H, um, if you want to think of it this way, remember there's a 1 right here, so H times 1 is H, and that would equal the product of C and sine B. So we're going to call that number 1, uh, just so I can refer to it in a moment later. So next we're going to work in this triangle over here. So in triangle ADC over here, H is across from angle C, so H would be the opposite side, and B would be the hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle again. So opposite and hypotenuse is sine again. So the sine of angle C would equal the opposite H over the B hypotenuse, and again, we want to solve for H here same as before so we're going to cross multiply to solve for H again so if you want uh, you can put the 1 in here and so H times 1 is H it would equal the product of B and the sine of C so I'm going to call that number 2 now uh, up here I'm going to say we're going to go, we're going to equate numbers 1 and 2 and what I mean by that is that here we have H equals C sine B, and here we have the same H equals B sine C. So this and this must be equal because they're both equal to H. So that's what I mean by equating numbers 1 and 2. Okay, they're, These expressions are both equal to H, so they must be equal. So what we're going to do to get, to get what the sine law normally looks like, we could actually call this the sine law. Okay. But uh, it's in a little more usable form if we do this, this next step here. We're going to divide both sides by the sine of B times the sine of C. So it looks like this. And of course, uh, over here on the left, the sine C's will divide out. And over here on the right, the sine B's will divide out. So what we're left with is B sine over B over sine B is equal to C over sine C. And so what this looks like is that we have a side length divided by the sine of the angle across from it in each case. The angle C, sorry, the side C length divided by the sine of angle C across from it. Now, there's also an A over sine A as well. Uh, there's three parts to this. You're always using any two, the two that you want to use or can use, depending on what sides and angles you know. So this is one version of the sine law. I guess I'll write both of these out. Um, a over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. When I say little a or B or C, I mean the length of side A or B or C. It doesn't matter whether the sides are on the top in the numerators or on the bottom, all on the bottom of the denominators. You can't put like a side A down here and a side B up here. Uh, so those both correctly state the law of sines. Uh, I only proved this part. Similarly, we could prove that A over sine A equals B over sine B. Okay, so I didn't include that one in here, but it would be the same kind of proof. Okay, so that's a derivation of the sine law or a proof that the sine law actually works. Um, it's because this could be done to any triangle whatsoever. And that's the end of the tutorial.